Thank you for joining us. Please enjoy this video from Monsignor Bill. Good day. Happy to be with you again in this format. We're ending our first full week of Lent. And so far, it's been a good Lent. But are we doing the best we can do with Lent? One of the most wonderful, uh, two of the most wonderful things of uh, Lenten practices is, first of all, fasting. Now, there's all kinds of ways to do fasting. Uh, I might fast from eating chocolate, which is kind of easy for me because I don't, you know, I could give or take chocolate. And as I think I said last week, I uh, always give up mountain climbing during Lent. Well, that doesn't really count because I have never gone uh, mountain climbing, and I don't intend to either. But what about fasting from meat? I know some people who don't eat meat any time during Lent. Nothing wrong with uh, meat. They say, this is something I'm doing for the good of my soul. Not just my body, but my soul. There are some people, I found out, that <laughs> all they do is drink beer during Lent. Lent. Nothing else, just beer. And I'm thinking, I don't know the efficacy of that, but the man lost 40 pounds doing that. But you have to get you know, the, the kind of heavy beer, the stout that's there to get the the kind of nutrients that we need. I know some people that uh, have given up YouTube for Lent. Boy, try that one. That is not an easy thing to do. Uh, but and he's only uh, 12 years old, giving up YouTube for Lent. Now, when we do these things, the, the, these fastings, uh, it's a freely chosen activity. We don't have to do that. The church mandates that we fast on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. But if we choose to uh, give up something or take on something, that, that's a, a promise, kind of, and maybe promise isn't the best word, but it's a, an intention to do this or that. And it's freely done. We're not required to do that. And you can't fast from Mass, all right? Because uh, we have to do that. Well, I'm, I'm going to fast by not gossiping. Well, no, that's not a fast when you do that. That's, that's virtue when you don't uh, gossip. So if you decide to do one of these particular things, and everybody has their own things that can really help, you don't have to do that. You can stop one day or skip a day. It's no sin. It's not a sin. And it's not about, well, I'm just going to you know, tell everybody and brag to everybody that I have this strong will that I can keep this promise. When we do that, we miss the whole point. And the other, well, one of the other great practices of Lent is almsgiving and giving to the poor. Maybe Lent would be a good time to uh, go through your closet and take things out. You, know, you haven't worn this, or I don't need this anymore, etc., etc. You don't do that so you can go out and buy new clothes, but to give to the poor, the naked, those who, who don't have uh, the ability to get some nice clothes. So there's many different things. Uh, you know, we don't want to limit it too much. But in doing that, that's what frees us. We can actually not have to depend so much on, on hoarding money or getting a dessert every day. We begin to free ourselves to spend more time with God, to spend more time with our family. There's many ways to do that. Maybe... Uh, you should fast from golf for a month during Lent. I, you know, everybody's different. And the practices we take are going to touch us in different ways. 
So there's not just one way to fast. Now on those two days, we've already fast one, but on Good Friday, that's a day of fasting and abstinence. You know, just uh, two small meals and, and one meal that would be uh, a normal meal. But those are the only two days that the church requires us to do that. All the rest of the time, we have to kind of take that on for ourselves. And that's one of the ways we grow in wisdom and age and grace, because Jesus fasted. He didn't do a lot of almsgiving because he was poor. Although he did, you know, have the coin come out of the fish for the temple ta uh, tax and things like that. And he's not averse to having money, but there's something more important, something deeper. So as we enter into this next uh, week of Lent and the transfiguration of Christ, which is usually the, the gospel for, um, for the second week, and they had this beautiful vision of Jesus, this heavenly vision of Jesus. And we haven't had that. We have to work in our faith and stay in our faith. And the eyewitnesses who said it was a glorious, glorious transfiguration. But that's what's in store for us. A glorious transformation when there's no more uh, the, the, the chasm between our physical and our spiritual side will be taken away. And our physical body and our spiritual soul will be so integrated, so complete, that it will be a new humanity. That's our goal. That's what Jesus wants for us. Fasting and almsgiving can help us achieve that with the grace of God. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.